So hello everyone and um, welcome to another exciting Sunday at God City High Week. Every time I say that I feel so happy. No matter what challenges I try to do to scatter us, we are still standing. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Every time I say that, I just feel so happy. God, City High, we come. This is where the whole story started, 2009, as in, in this entity called God City Assembly. And from there, the entire world is being impacted. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we've been talking about praying effectively. Praying effectively. We... We, we, we started by looking at what are the basics of, of, of praying effectively. Pastor Sam started by giving us a very useful uh, acronym that we could use, ACT, you know, in order for us to pray effectively. You always adore God, praise and worship Him. You confess your sins, you go in by the blood of Jesus. You, you give thanksgiving, always thank God before you ask for things. Always thank Him before you ask for things. And then air supplication. We have to now ask for the things you need. And I built on that by saying that you cannot effectively pray to a being you are not familiar with. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> so you need to spend time with God. Now, time is what many people in recent times, especially in the UK, do, don't seem to have. So I'm saying whatever time you spend with him, make it quality, time. Amen. You understand? I'm not saying, you oh, spend six hours, eight hours. Not everyone has got that time. Mm -hmm. But whatever time you decide to spend with God, make it worthwhile. Not in the middle of it, you are checking your text, you are checking your Facebook. No. If it's with God, then let it be with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I also said that Jesus Christ had certain claims that all of us should try and go for. He's, you know, it was said of him that there was open heavens over him after he was baptized. And all of us should try and pray so that we will have an open heaven. Because the, the testimony that God said about him after the heavens opened was that, this is who? My son, in whom I am well pleased. So if God is pleased with you, you have an open heaven. Amen. It's, it's, it's that simple. I know it can be tough, but it is that straightforward. And so all of us should try our best to try and be the child that God will be very pleased with. And then we know that we can lay that claim like Jesus did, that when I pray, he always hears me. And one of the things I wanted to remind us of, because the Holy Spirit is telling me as I'm going this way now, I didn't want to start this way, but I wanted to just remind us, is that Jesus Christ said, I thank you because you always hear me. When he wanted to pray for Lazarus to, 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 to come from the grave. But on the other side, in first, uh, uh, first John chapter 5, verse 4, somewhere, or uh, 14 and 15, I suppose, was first John chapter 5 for sure. He made it clear that when we pray according to his will, he hears us. Mm. So if you put those two things together, mm. Jesus always prayed God's will. So God always hears him. That's why he made that claim that when I pray, he always hear me. Because he always prays God's will. So any one of us who prays God's will, we, God will hear us and we know our petitions are before him and he will give us the appropriate answer in due season. Amen? Amen. So we, we, we moved on to say that, you know, apart from spending quality time, one of the ways we can also do our best with God is to make sure that we, 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 we are so intimate with him that we are the sheep of his fold. As it is said in Psalm 100, he provides for his sheep, and, or as, like Jesus said in, in John 15, my sheep, they hear my voice. They know me and they hear my voice. So if you are not God's sheep, you won't hear his voice. Mm -hmm. So obedience, because you have to hear God so prayer is a listening thing, not just a talking thing. It's also a listening thing. You pray, you listen. You pray, you listen. And when you hear him, you carry out his instruction. And your obedience becomes the answer to your prayer. You understand? Obedience is the answer to your prayer. So we need to listen. We need to, to obey. And, and we need to be sure that we are, we, we are so intimate with him that we are able to hear him 
Hear his instruction and carry out his instruction. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So Amen. building up on that, we're still looking at praying effectively. We want to look at praying without season. Amen. Praying without season. I mean, when I saw this in the in the Bible, I was a bit confounded because I'm like, how do you not never stop praying? In fact, let us check uh, the instruction in First Thessalonians chapter five, verse seventeen. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. And it says, pray without ceasing. Another version says, never stop praying. So I was, I was asking myself, I'm like, how are we to do this practically? How do we practically do this? You know? And uh, it crossed my mind straight away that it must be in the realm of our minds. Mm. It is in the realm of our mind because it is not humanly possible for you never to stop praying. So it must be in another realm. And the realm that comes to me very strongly is in the realm of our mind. King David, who was uh, a champion <laughs> that was struggling between Old, and Old Testament and New Testament long before his time, tells us in Psalm 19 verse 14, he says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. When I discovered this in secondary school, I started adding that to my prayer very regularly. That Lord help me so that even the things I'm thinking on will be pleasing to you. You know, because I knew that I had such an active imagination and I had a tendency not to go in the right direction. You understand? So I'm like, Lord, help my meditation. Not just help the words of my mouth, but also help my meditation as well. The things I'm meditating on to be acceptable before you. So, we look at Luke chapter 6, verse 45, and I want somebody in the church to read it, because sometimes I like us to participate in what we do. Luke 6, 45. Luke chapter 6 from verse 45. Yes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Now let me let me lay thank you very much. Let me lay the foundation. The heart, the mind, the soul. They're just talking about the same thing. They're talking about a section in your brain that carries your intellect, your emotions, and your imaginations. Now, a lot of people, because the word heart has been used, they keep thinking about the heart. You know, we say, oh, I love you. I love you with my heart. I love because the heart has always been used um, or as a misnomer over time. It's actually referring to a portion of your brain. It's a place that actually controls your soul. You understand? So man is spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. The section that controls the soul, that's your mind, that's your heart. You know, that's that, you know, they call it interchangeably different things from time to time. And it's made up of those three different aspects majorly. Intellect, emotions, and imaginations. So, this section is so crucial, your soul, because it straddles between, no, it, it actually occupies, it doesn't straddle, it occupies between your spirit and your flesh. You understand? So, your spirit is the real finished article. Then you have your soul, and then you have your flesh. Now, how much of the, the of your soul is impacted by your spirit determines what your flesh exhibits or displays or manifests or acts on or shows other people about. So the, the, the whole idea of, oh, I'm being born again, your spirit became born again. Your soul had not become born again and definitely your, your flesh did not become born again when you became born again. That's why we have to go on a journey with God of trying to retrain our minds. Because we have trained it on the wrong things. 
where we come from, our culture, our, our parents, the first set of people that influenced us, our environment, what we read in a book, what we watch in a TV, all of that is how you have trained your soul. So in order for your soul to now pander to your spirit, you need to retrain your soul. Mm. So the, 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 the challenge for every human being is how well trained their soul is. Mm. So if you tie that to what we have just read, you start to understand. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, or his mind, or his soul, brings forth what? Good. good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings out what? Evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. I was recording the radio program for Adwekiti over the weekend, and I'm going to repeat what I said. Talking is a scientific process, or can be explained scientifically. It's a process that can be scientifically explained. This part in your brain, called the heart or the mind or the soul, thinks about something and then decide to want to give that thing an expression. And then this thought or this feeling or this whatever, whatever you want to call it, transfers to your voice box where hair, A-I-R, air, tries to blow over your voice. Your voice box is like a machine. That's why you find that some people, they, they puncture this place so that they can talk. It's, a, it's like a machine. If you, if you blow here into it, you will make all these voice, all these sounds. You can hear me saying. So your thought and your mind now transfers whatever it is they want to say over that voice box and hair modulates, and then you speak. And that's why I say that what any, whatever anybody says to you, don't believe them that, oh, sorry, I, will, I don't mean it. Because you can, there's no way you can mistakenly say anything. Can I repeat myself? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. There's no way any human being can mistakenly say anything to you. They could change their minds afterwards. Mm. Okay. But as of that moment, they said that thing to you, that was what their mind was thinking about. Mm. Mm. So out of the abundance of the heart, Speaking. the mouth speaks. Mm. speaks. So I ask you a question. Who's got your heart? Mm. Mm. Who's got your mind? Who's got your soul? If I were to record everything that you are saying, I can easily trace back to whatever is in your heart. And that's why I tell my wife that yes, I was born with a discerning spirit, but life has taught me that you don't even need to have any spiritual gift to know what people are thinking. God, they will tell you by what they say. If you just take a transcript of what people say, it traces back to what their fears are, what their beliefs are, what their leaning or disposition is. They will tell you all of it in what they say. So our job, our challenge, our task as God's children is to train our hearts so that it lines up with what God is saying about us. Amen. 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 That's why the wise man Solomon in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, addresses us and said, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs what? Issues of life. I'm, I, I, I can write a book on this. I've, 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 I've almost tried all the ways you shouldn't do it in, on this matter. I've failed so many times in this regard, I can write a book on it. If you do not keep your heart, there's no way you can be successful. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Many people wear their heart on their sleeves. You've heard of that expression, mm. wearing your heart on your sleeve. You can't afford to do that. If you want to be successful, you cannot afford to do that. That means those people at any slight thing, they are reacting to it. I used to be that for years. When I see my daughter doing something along those lines, I'm like, hey, don't go and be like me, oh. You can't afford to be like that. 
You just can't afford to be like that. Amen. Amen. Because you have to guard your heart with diligence. You have to actively protect yourself from the elements that will try and break your heart. Because out of that heart are issues of life. So I haven't forgotten. I know we're talking about praying effectively. So why did I take time to lay the foundation very well? Because I believe that the key to praying without ceasing is in our heart. Because it is almost physically impossible. I don't want to say impossible, but maybe some people could, may have attempted it. I just think it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not feasible. It's not, it's not functional. It's not something that you want to keep doing every time. It's not natural. That's why some churches erroneously think we just have to pray hours and hours and hours. Because they were trying to obey this instruction of praying without ceasing. But what did it lead us to? Vain repetition. Mm. Wow. What Matthew chapter 6 says we should not do in prayer. Because how many, and how, what, what, do you want, what do you want from God? Okay, let's say you want 102 things. I'm, 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 I'm being ridiculous now. You want 102 items. So when you finish recounting the 102nd one, where do you go from there? And you look at the time, it's only been 22 minutes, 33 seconds. You understand the point I'm making? Where do you go from that? So what, what a lot of people tend to do, and I'm raising the red flag here, and I've been doing it in the last one month, is they fall into false tongue. Which is dangerous. A tongue that is not inspired by the Holy Spirit. Oh, co 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 coronavirus. Because people don't know what else to say. They've run out of things to say. Mm. Wow. And even more dangerously, we now go back into very repetition. Oh, give me Lord. Oh, give me Lord. Oh, is God deaf? Mm. I prayed like that. So, guys, I'm not being hypocritical. I prayed like that for many years of my life. Erroneously. Because we feel that there's a physical thing we need to apply to the actual prayer itself. Oh Lord, keep my enemy. Keep my enemy. Keep my enemy. Keep my enemy. And you know, you are trying to fill in the time. Because you don't have much to say. The key is our heart. I have tested it. I'm a living, breathing testimony that this works. Ask my wife, you never find me leaning down anymore? Since I discovered this secret, I'm lying on my sofa, I'm watching TV. But my heart is with my maker. Hallelujah. That's one of my secrets that many people have not discovered. They're looking at me lying on the sofa like I'm some useless person. I'm probably doing far more than you are running all over the place. I'm talking to the creator of heaven and earth. What, who are you talking to? Wow. <laughs> That's why one of my nicknames in secondary school was dangerous. Because I've just always had these kind of things with me all my life. Why everybody is just sweating everywhere? Somehow I'll just find a winning formula out of something. Mm. My heart is always with my maker. I mean, it takes a lot of training for you to be able to do that. Mm. It's almost like you are keeping an open channel so that when he speaks, you hear. That's why you find, you you guys know, you've known me not so number of years, I'll be talking, I'm like, oh, the Holy Spirit is saying, yeah. many people don't have that ability, because their channel is short. My channel is always open to God. He can talk to me any time. Mm. I'm open for business any time. And if God is instructing me, there's no way you can do better. Look, I'm only saying this, my wife laughs because she knows my story. There's no way you can do better than me. I don't care who you are. God is instructing me. Who are you? Are you again? You can't. You, you can run. You can amass things. I'm still going to do better than you. Because he's the creator of heaven and earth that is instructing me. Hmm. Ah. I, I hope you guys will take that on board in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
this God thing is not sweating. We just overdo it. As human beings, I introduce sweat into it. Hmm. I'm in my toilet. That's my wife. That's where I receive most of my revelation. My toilet at home. Don't have to travel to any mountain to go and be beaten by mosquito. I'm not saying go to the mountain is a sin. What I'm saying is we don't really need any of that. That's why the wise man, Solomon, also wrote in Proverbs 8.34, he said, blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. That's God talking through Solomon. When they call you a wise man, what it means is that you have been able to tap God's perspective on a matter. That's what wisdom means. Wisdom is not because you're smart, that's intelligence. Intelligence on knowledge and facts. Wisdom is that you've been able to discover God's perspective on a matter. Should I repeat myself? Yes, please. Because when you see me talking quietly like this, I'm dropping secrets. I shout when I'm emotional. I'm quieter when I'm really serious. Wisdom is not that you are born smart. Mm. You understand? Oh, he's such a smart person. I, look, I've been a smart person most of my life that was not wise. Mm. So being intelligent doesn't mean you're wise. Wisdom is the ability to have discovered God's perspective on a matter. Mm. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. It's one of the things he called me with. He called me with prayer and he called me with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. That's why he named me Daniel, man of wisdom and understanding. <laughs> Blessed is the man who watches daily at God's gate. Who watches daily, waiting to hear what God will say about a matter. You know those people running there after scatter, after something has happened. They're like, Lord, why? Why, Lord? Why, Lord? No, Zed me. <laughs> What have you been using your mind for? Listening daily. That's the secret to praying without season. Listening to God daily. Sometimes I'll just sit like a blank. I don't know. He hasn't said anything to me. I haven't heard anything. But I'm waiting. I'm actively waiting because I want to hear from him. Can we read, somebody read Psalm chapter 1, but I want you to read from verses 1 to 3 for me. I've only got 2 and 3 on my slide, but I think it, it didn't quite work out well the way I wanted it to. So we're reading from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 1, 1 to 3. Psalm chapter 1, yes, from verse 1 to 3. Yeah. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, scornful. too. Yeah. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. Yes. Three, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, season. whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. That is my objective in this life. You want to know what my objective is? That's my objective. I want to be that person. It is written twice in the Bible. I don't know where the second one is, but I know it's twice in the Bible. A man who gives fruit in a season, who prospers in everything that he does. Everything, not some things, everything that he does. That is my objective. That's the goal I set myself. And I know I can't get it done unless God shows me how. I've seen so many rich people who are miserable. I don't want to be them. Mm. I've seen so many rich people who are sickly. I don't want to be them. And I'm not saying this to scorn them. I'm just saying that, look, I've seen so many things that people really uh, glorify, but I don't. You know, see somebody who's very successful, he's got all these crazy children running after him. I don't want to be that person. 
You want to be blessed in every way. Every way. Somebody will look at me at the end of my days and say, man, that guy is blessed, man. I'll never be the richest person in the world, but I'll, I'll be blessed by the time I'm done. That's my objective. Oh, I've seen too many so-called successful people, and I've gone into their homes, and I'm not very happy with what I discovered. I'm like, you know what, me, I don't want this. Hmm. Yeah, they've got all these beautiful cars, they've got all this money in the bank, they wear all these beautiful clothes, but look at their home. I'm like, no, me, I don't want this one. Hmm. It's, it's a decision I made as a teenager. Lord, bless me in every way every way and he told me it's going to be a slow burning i said yeah i'm ready that's what i want I don't want all these ones no i don't the delight of the righteous man who will prosper before god is meditating on god's word god's law day and night day and night can somebody read joshua chapter 1 verse 8 for me Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Thou shalt mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Guys, if God says you have good success, that means there are type of success that are not good. Wow. Because there's no waste of words in the Bible. So that means there are some type of success that we glorify, but they're not really good successes. And I think it fits into the description of something I've just said before we read this. They have all these a picture was shown on Facebook recently, one of the richest, somebody used to be one of the richest people in Nigeria, and they showed his garage in Koyi, Lagos, and we had all these rotting Rolls Royce there, as in lost, they were all rusted. God, don't make that for me, in Jesus' name. And I don't want that. Rolls Royce, God knows how much they cost when they were bought. All of them inside the garage thing there. I know that there is a scorn that comes from the poor, poverty stricken against the rich. This is not the one I'm saying here. I want to be rich. I have nothing against the rich. I want to be rich God's way. Mm. You know, you know, poor people have a tendency to just, ah, well, rich people, yeah, they have money, but we don't know what their trouble is. You know, they're always finding excuses because for their poverty. You know, I'm not, that's, I'm not in that group. Me, I want the money. I want the, you understand, I want the good things, but I want it God's way. way. Guys, the trick is to meditate on God's word day and, and night. night. That's how you train your heart, your mind your soul. Mm. You meditate. That's why when I wrote um, the book on what's that thing called that you read every day, uh, devotional, I did not write the lengthy ones they normally do, which is like a whole story. Because I wanted people to just take a scripture and meditate on it all day long. That's why I designed it that way. It hasn't quite caught on yet, but it will. I'm rewriting it now. Not rewriting, I'm restructuring it now and I'm going to re release it again. You don't need long stories. One, two, at most three scriptures. That's it for the day. Meditate on it over and over. Over and over. That's doable. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why Prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 26 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. In you. Mm. If your mind is stayed on God, you won't be running that task like most of these other people are doing. Because somehow in their mind, they believe they are responsible for themselves. Mm. You are not responsible for the universe. Why do you think you'll be responsible for yourself? <laughs> if your mind trusts in God, you have your peace. It doesn't mean you will not have challenges trying to challenge it. That's why it's called challenges. It's challenging your peace. Mm -hmm. It's trying to take our joy. It's trying to take our happiness. It's challenging it. Mm -hmm. But it will not succeed in Jesus' name. Amen. 
In Philippians chapter 4, we read from verses 4 to 8. Philippians chapter 4, if you read from verses 4 to 8, it makes it clear to us. I read from 6 to 7, or 6 to 8, and then don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for what He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guide your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 8 of Ephesians 4 says, Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. That means if it is negative, don't meditate on it. Let it go. If it's negative, leave it. It's poison. So, in addition to meditating on God's word, which is the only thing that can change our hearts and minds, you must consciously meditate on only what is good, not on negativity. There are a lot of people that the, 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 the biggest portion of, their, of the food they consume daily is negativity. No, we must not be like that at all. So, meditation is key. To pray without ceasing. Meditation is key. Psalm 63 verse 6. Psalm 63 verse 6. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in night watches. So David tell me that even at night, he's thinking about God. Even at night, on his bed, he's still thinking about God. What do you often think about? Mm. So we need to make a concerted effort to move it from where it is to where it should be. Mm. Amen. 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 Second Chronicles sixteen nine, and I read quickly. Second Chronicles sixteen nine says, "The eyes of the Lord search the whole heart, in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him." What a fool you are being! For now on, you'll be at war. Because the mind of the children of Israel was not searching after God. So if he told them now they will be fighting wars. God goes around to search those whose hearts are looking for him. <laughs> Second Chronicles 16:9. God's searching for those who are looking for him. Amen. 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 And then to bring this to a close. You know, gradually, you have to say different kinds of prayer. As you can see in um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, say, Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the same. So, yes, there's nothing wrong in praying in tongues if God, the Holy Spirit, inspires you to do so. There's nothing wrong in praying in songs. There's nothing wrong in praying in your you know, local language. Different kinds of prayer now, you understand? All of that is, is acceptable. And finally, it says we have to pray. First Timothy 2, 1 to 2 says, I exhort first of all that supplication, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. Guys, we are meant to be praying for other people, not just ourselves. Mm. It's all the reasons our prayers are always short. Oh, I'm just praying for ourselves. We're done. Next. No, oh, different kinds of prayer. I'm praying for other people, especially those in authority. All oh, the decisions they are making is affecting our lives every day. Mm. Mm. Amen. 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 And the different types of prayer that you can pray: supplication, which is supply. You understand? God give me, God give me. Nothing wrong with it. Prayer of petition. Prophetic prayer, intercession, different kinds of prayer. So this is how you pray without ceasing. Amen. Start to your feet. Let's Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory to God. Wow. Father, Lord, we, we, we thank you for 
the help of your Holy Spirit in what has just happened, we have been able to find out that we have been commanded to pray. And the issue with us is that we are trying to learn how to pray effectively. My Lord and my God, I pray that the, 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 the nuggets that have been dropped in this session, oh Lord, will continue to bear fruit in our hearts and minds in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord, in the areas where our strengths are actually weak, let your strength be made perfect, Father. Amen. Teach us to pray. Help Amen. us to pray. Amen. Help us, Father Lord, to pray effectively. Yes. And let all the glory go to your name, Father Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Shall we share the grace? May, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the love, love of God, God and the sweet, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I pray that you have a blessed week in Jesus' name. Amen. I plead the blood of Jesus on you Lord. and your children. Amen. I say that no coronavirus will touch any of us Amen. in the name of Jesus. I pray for increase on all sides. Amen. I pray for favor on all sides. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.